I'd just like to welcome Richard Saul and uh, Louisa Ann, two members of our staff and two ex-students at the Catholic High School. So we're going to be talking about what's changed, obviously, from a student to a member of staff and um, basically what they can tell us about their experiences here. So I'll start with Louise, Louise Aran, a.k.a. Louise Bradley. So Louise, tell us about your timings when you were actually at school. So I started in school in 1999 um, and left in 2006 at the end of sixth form. So I had the full seven years here and an absolutely brilliant time while I was here. So what, the obvious question, Louise, what made you come back? <laughs> um, I just loved school. I really enjoyed it. I was involved in a lot of things um, and I always just felt so supported by the teachers um, and my fellow students. I think, you know, the idea of school as being family can sometimes be thrown about a little bit too easily but I think here there really is that sense of community mm -hmm. you do feel a part of something you feel supported um, and you feel that people really know you and really understand you and sort of drives you kind of on I mean to sort of pick pick a moment out I remember when I had my interview for sixth form mm -hmm. um, and it was Mrs Appleton that was right. doing that interview Mrs um, Appleton's still here Mrs Appleton is still here <laughs> um and yeah, and as we were talking, she was like, what do you think you want to do sort of mm -hmm. after school? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I knew that I really enjoyed languages and I was going to carry them further. Mm -hmm. But she said, have you ever thought about being a teacher? And at the time I was like, oh, no, of course not. It'd be ridiculous. <laughs> but it's just, just going to show that actually sometimes your teachers maybe know you better than you, you know yeah. yourself. Um, so yeah, she's a very wise woman, Mrs. Appleton. <laughs> and I've got the pleasure of working alongside her, which is just a joy as well. Um, so yeah, I knew I wanted to help people and I wanted to give back. And eventually I... Sort of caught up with Mrs. Appleton's way of thinking. And, yeah, ended up <laughs> Followed the path and, <laughs> yeah. and, and come straight back here. Mr. Saul, is that the same for you? What, what were we? When were you here? Uh, well, it's must have been about eighty-five, eighty-six right. that I came here. Um, and obviously, was went through school. Uh, strangely enough, looking back, science was the thing that I liked. Right, most. funny so, that, I, that I, that's I, what you <laughs> teach. Or, or anything creative. Um, so. Design technology used to be mm -hmm. uh, quite simple, but obviously, uh, <laughs> the nod in here with the, obviously uh, uh, memories from the past. I think it was Miss Hoyle uh, in biology. Um, she was the one that really sort of made me love science. Um, yeah. So, um, I went through and yeah, I got all my grades at GCSE. Mm -hmm. Struggled with my A levels a little. And that can happen. Yeah, that yeah. can happen. Uh, obviously, the, the choices that students have these days in terms mm. of um, going to school um, weren't uh, there. Yeah. Which is, it was either college and stuff or university. Yeah. Um, and I think my family really wanted me to go to university. So I ended up doing a HMD mm -hmm. course, which is a college yeah. course in electronics uh, and technology. And then uh, I did quite well at that, so I converted into a degree in information and audio interface design, mm -hmm. which I thoroughly enjoyed. I did a few years in the music industry, um, mainly selling and setting up equipment. Right. Uh, so people, um, what I found was I really enjoyed the entertainment side of it. Yeah. So when that era of my life came to an end, I was yeah. So it just seems to come along at the right time. Mm. And why this school? Um, I love Chester. Mm -hmm. um, born and bred Chester. Uh, we went away to Chester, moved back, um, because of the community, and I just think it's one of the best schools in the area. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a real sort of family feel to it. I remember, I really remember day one of my interview coming in, sitting in the car park, bearing in mind I've worked in school. Yeah. Just seeing the respect the the niceness of the way students came in mm. the respect for each other and they, they just seemed to get along you know they came in sort of set it apart from other schools in the area they mm. always liked it do you think if you'd had this conversation with the 12 year old you if you said right basically you're going to be coming back nope. to the catholic high <laughs> as a physics teacher <laughs> do you think what do you think that 12 year old richard would be saying to you 12 year old richard is quite a lazy boy 
<laughs> he was like, no, it looks like too much work for me. I'm not coming back. <laughs> um, to be fair, um, before the music side of me kicked off, it was more um, the outside, the outdoors. Right. Uh, I was very much into the uh, south in the streets of Edinburgh, mm-hmm. camping um, environment. And I think I spent most of my uh, five years in the GCC wanting to do forestry. Right. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that in you. Yeah. I can see <laughs> that. <laughs> it's got that, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think, as my nan pointed out, when I was about 11, um, about year 11, and she sort of said, well, you don't really know any trees, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, no, I don't know all my guitars. I know all the old cables, yeah. but I don't really know any trees, so maybe I'm choosing the wrong choice. And that's the thing, isn't it? You both of your journeys are very because you possibly went to university, did the languages, yeah. knew what it was like. But actually, for you, it was like, well, I did other things, and that it, that can often be the route to teaching. You know that actually, I want to try different things, but then you, you come back to it. You think, yeah, I do think I want to influence and I want to pass on my knowledge to to young people. How about you, Mister Ram, with languages and that? What? How do you think your thirteen year old self would feel about um. coming back? definitely wouldn't have said it was on the cards um <laughs> but yeah like I said you know I enjoyed school I enjoyed different subjects um languages was always one that I really enjoyed and, and mm-hmm. did particularly well at so I didn't really you know some people want to be a doctor or whatever it may be I wasn't really one of those people I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do mm-hmm. so I kind of just went with the do what you enjoy and, and what you're good at and I feel the advice I'd really give to, to most people today so I went to university I went to Nottingham, so again, moved away. Yeah, um, to good city, good university. Yeah, I absolutely love Nottingham, it was brilliant. Um, and also had the year abroad as part mm. of a language um, degree. So I was in Paris for six months. Wow. And Zaragoza um, in Spain for six months. And that was just the best thing that I've ever done. It was absolutely brilliant. You know, I was going to museums every day. Mm. Um, three hour lectures in French were hard work, to say the least. Yeah. It was quite a lot. Um, but yeah, the experience was just incredible to be sort of just wandering around the city and I had a little flat um, mm. but my friends always used to come in and <laughs> stay out with me. Um, so yeah, that was brilliant. And then Zaragoza in Spain was sort of totally different because mm-hmm. in, in Paris it was, you had to sort of force people to talk yeah. French to you. You sort of <laughs> spoke to them in French and they re- returned back in English, yeah, um, which I'm was kind. quite frustrating <laughs> um, for most of it. Whereas in, in Zaragoza they didn't... Um, it's quite an industrial area. It's one of the, the biggest cities in Spain and sort of right. the top five in terms of size. I love but, the way you say it so clearly. Very, <laughs> I love it, I love it. But very industrial, um, so not a lot of tourism, not a lot of English. Um, so, yeah, that, that felt a little bit more authentic, I guess. As much as I love Paris, Aragotha really was sort of proper Spain, it, it kind of felt like. I'd had a little bit of trouble adjusting from asking for la vision in France. <laughs> <laughs> that point time and he couldn't quite deal with that, that, that change when he came to visit me. Um, but yeah, so being away, and I think that's the time. It was the end of, obviously, a, a languages degree is four years as mm-hmm. opposed to the normal three. So it's that third year you're away. So to the end of it, I did it. Um, one of my courses at university in Spain was teaching English as a foreign language. Mm-hmm. And that sort of brought brought everything together, really. Like I said, I knew I always wanted to give back and help and, and be around people. Um, and actually, I also love how the language works and, yeah. and, and all of that. So even though it was English, it's often really useful when teaching a foreign language as well. So that sort of cemented that that, that was what I was going to do. And then I was fortunate enough that the opening for here came up just as I was finishing my PGC year. Yeah. Um, originally was, just was for it a year. Strange? Was it strange when a lot of the teachers <laughs> would still have been here yeah. when you became a miss? <laughs> yes, it was um, a little bit. And everyone's like, oh, call me by this or that. Or that. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure I quite can yet. I need a little bit more time. Um, I was really close to a lot of the my friends at school as well one of those was um, Mrs Pete's daughter who's still one of my best friends to, right. to this day um, so I'd obviously stayed in touch with her quite a bit so that was quite nice so that bit I'd, I'd got over the sort of awkwardness yeah. <laughs> there in terms of seeing her socially but yeah everyone else took it a little bit of time but you know I think it's a testament to the school the fact that there were so many people I started 12 years ago and it was still an awful lot of the same yeah. staff yeah. but even now I'd say there's still a massive amount of people are still here from when I was a student there and I think that says it all about the school that the people want to stay yeah we really like each other we really like 
the students and, and we want to just keep doing the best that we possibly can to, to support them in, in whatever they're going forward and support each other yeah and I think that's massive isn't it because it is it is a big job and I think it's we've got to be there for each other um, the students as well but definitely for each of our staff members what you know what's coming out with these conversations is certainly favorite memories of school Richard what would be your favorite memory of school Ooh. going down the music side of things I think uh, the amazement when I first arrived in year seven um, we used to have live bands on yeah. the hall at lunchtime the students I want to do that I want to do year, that year, 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 year eight up to year 11 was allowed to play on stage at lunchtime tell it was a piece of school mm. um, I mean this is predated Mr Tell um, does it does anything predate <laughs> Mr Tell <laughs> well just about because obviously you've got the famous story about Mr Tell and um, I don't know if you know but, um, his son uh, David Tell uh, used to be in an 80s band called First Day Drop Off Clothes right out of Liverpool with uh, William Coke right um, and he, he managed the band as well he went on and performed In those record labels, he was the first to star in Stand By Me Tour. Right. Uh, Gosh. And the story goes that uh, when he finally decided his, his Paddy Norty tied his boots up, <laughs> oh. uh, which a certain song was then uh, yeah. recorded about. Gosh. Him. Um, if you're out there listening, <laughs> please call in. <laughs> um, so I just feel, yeah, the school's always had this sort of musical. Yeah. And then obviously when Mr. Tell came along, he came when in the sort of final years that I was here, and uh, within a year he formulated the uh, the pretty jazz. Mm -hmm. and the younger sister was on the first ever tour. With her Brilliant. Lake, Lake Garda, they did Amsterdam. Fabulous. They did uh, numerous trips to Dublin. Yeah. And they basically won every competition they entered into, and every competition that they played. At. Yeah. Um, bringing home all the trophies. That's it. And that's what's amazing about them, isn't it? Yeah. What about yours? What is your favourite memory? Um, I wasn't very musical, as I'm sure Mr. <laughs> Tauk can attest. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I really enjoyed sport. I played on the netball team, the football team, um, the, the rounders team. So a lot of sports memories. Um, and, and trips was the other one. You know, I remember when we were in sixth form, we went on a trip to, to Italy. Um, and literally, we were, you know, we went to... Um, we went to Rome, we were there on, on Easter Sunday and wow. then Mount Vesuvius and that was just incredible and just, you know, to see all these things and to be with kind of your, your friends at that point was, yeah. was, was absolutely brilliant. And, um, you know, obviously there's still a 2K trip we went on in year seven, went to Normandy. It was, yeah, just absolutely brilliant. And just being around amazing people, you know, mm. my friends are, you know, most of my friends from school I'm still really close to. We yeah. see each other all the time. Even people that live away. Mm -hmm. You know, my best friends living in Hawaii at the moment. Wow. And, you know, so everyone's kind of, even if we've gone far away, we always come back and are in, in touch all the time. I met my husband here. Yeah. Um, oh, was he here as well? Yeah, he's, right. a, he's a former student as well. <laughs> yeah, you can't really escape anything from the Catholic High Bubble. We'll get you one way or another. Um, and it is really nice to, to just still have those, those long-lasting friendships, you know, yeah. that... that you want to keep because as you get older obviously it gets harder to keep in touch and but for, for lots of different reasons but we still do it and, and we still see each other all the time and that's it and that's the foundations that were that were built here really and what we learned from teachers and you know about respecting each other and all of those things it all sort of comes together and yeah and it's yeah. it is what it's all about and I'm, I'm going to ask you now and you can't say the head <laughs> as a teacher what is the, the the greatest thing about the school would you say I think it's a wide range of activities that are offered to mm -hmm. students. So not just the extracurricular stuff, but the other things they can get involved in. And time and time again, I see that the students that seem to do best are the ones that get involved in the most yeah. things, whether it be obviously they play an instrument, or but they also do something in sports, yeah. or they also do something charity, or yeah. they also do this outside of school. And it's it's about keeping them busy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it's the fact that the school's able to offer so much. Yeah. That is yeah, and we say that you get out of life what you put in, and hopefully the students have cottoned on to that. That the more they can put in, the more they'll get out. I get out of life really. 
What about you, Louise? I'm going to sort of tie mine in and say the same. And also the people, because the people, the staff and the other students, having that confidence to push yourself out of your badge, like you say, to be musical and to be on the sports team and to, to be willing to throw yourself into such a range of activities means that it's a safe environment, an environment where students are allowed to try things and, and thrive and, and find what is you know most important to them and what they're going to take forward. Mm. Um, so yeah, we're incredibly lucky with, with our staff and our students. I think we are, and I certainly feel very lucky to have you two. As students and staff, thank you so much for your contribution to everything and long may you stay here and not move on <laughs> <laughs> again <laughs> yeah we'll come back anyway at some point i'm sure <laughs> can't get rid of us but thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Very much. thank you thank you, thank you.